How hard would it be for someone who has been using Evernote for 15 years to move more than 16,000 nodes to Obsidian? Yes, this is the challenge I'm putting myself through to help you. And of course, you are invited to join me on this journey. But there's one condition. If you are an Obsidian Ninja, please don't judge me. I'm new to this. Leave your comments and suggestions below to help other people. I'd like to start by talking about the building blocks I use on Evernote, notes, notebooks, and tags, and how I'm translating them to the Obsidian way of doing things. And some of you may be asking, why Obsidian? There are many reasons, and I promise to share all of them along the videos I'll be publishing on this series. And of course, just because I decided to start recording this, I can hear some construction noises around me. <laughs> so I apologize in advance. I'm calling this my first mindset problem. Let me show you what I mean. Creating notes in Obsidian is pretty easy. All we have to do is click here, and there we have it. Uh, new note. I can add text and I can even move this node to another space. Okay, And I can even drag an image like we do in other note-taking apps. However, this image is not really inside this node. As you can see here, Obsidian copied that file to the file system. So if I delete this file here and go back to my note, here it is, no image anymore. I'll talk more about this when we get to the folder chapter, so let me show you another thing here. Notes in Obsidian can have extra data, metadata, inside them, and to do this, you have to include them inside uh, two lines of minus signs. For example, I can add here tags, and now if I go to the uh, reading mode, that metadata is gone. There's a way to make it visible even in the reading mode, and I'll get to that in a moment. There are many organization implication. There are benefits too. For example, let's put this image back here. And now that I have this image here, I can create, uh, let's call this new note number two. I can use the same image here. I don't have to have two of the same image or three or four. Uh, I can share the same image with many notes, and, and I think this is a good thing. Anyway, different mindset. Spoiler alert, get used to that sentence. You'll hear it a lot today. <laughs> there are no notebooks on Obsidian. What we have here are folders that not only look like the folders we have in our computers, they are the folders that we have in our computers. If you want to understand that in more detail, please watch this other video, Obsidian for Beginners, that I published a while ago. And just like the notes, I can create new folders, new folder, let's call this new folder number one, and inside this folder, I can right click here and create new folder, new folder number two, inside this one, new folder, Number three, you got the idea. This doesn't exist on Evernote. Evernote has just one level. Notes are inside a notebook, and that's it. There is no notebook inside a notebook. And I think this is too much freedom. It can, can go crazy pretty fast. So my plan to avoid a big mess here is trying to keep my obsidian structure as similar as possible as the one I have on Evernote. Of course, that's easier said than done, because there is another mindset that I have to change here. Remember the images, the files? Let's create a new folder here. 
I'm calling it attachments. And now let's go to settings, file and links. And if we go down here, we'll find this default location for new attachments. Let's change this to a specific folder below. And this folder will be the attachments folder. Okay, let's create a new node here. And now if I drag uh, an attachment, this will be created inside the attachments folder. Well, this is good because it organizes things a little bit, but it's not so good because remember the files are not stored inside the node. So if by an accident, let's go to that node, I delete this here. That's it. That image is not connected to that node anymore. It's pretty easy to bring it back. It's just a matter of dragging it back to the node. But can we agree that that attachments folder will be full of attachments in no time? And it's going to be kind of hard to find the right one if we delete it by accident. And not only that, it's going to be hard to reuse an image. We have to find that image to reuse it in another node. So what I'm doing here is for each a uh, folder I have, I'm creating a subfolder called files where I'm keeping the files of that topic. It, it's not going to solve the problem, but it's going to make things easier if I have to find a file. Mindset. <laughs> If the video has been useful so far, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to follow me on this journey and have fun with other videos I publish here on the channel, please consider subscribing. Okay, let's talk about tags. There are two ways to create a tag on Obsidian. Maybe more, but I'm aware of only these two. For example, you can create a Porto tag by adding the hashtag. The first time I saw this was on Bear many years ago, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Nowadays, I don't use this. I don't like it. There are many reasons. For example, if I'm trying to create a tag with two words, I'll have to link those two words. For example, New York. And again, I think we have to agree that it's not interesting to write a text and have this underscore in between the words in, in the middle of the text. And there's another uh, cosmetic problem, not, not only cosmetic, but when, I, when I'm, if we're doing this, taking notes and adding tags, how can we know if we have already added that tag or not. How many of the same tags will be adding to a text when that word repeats itself? So yeah, I, I don't really like it, but, it, but it's there. Maybe you'll enjoy it. The other possibility is creating the tags inside the front matter, as I have already shown you. But like I said, if we click here, they disappear. However, there's a way to fix that. Let's go to the settings again, editor, and look for show front matter. Here it is. Let's click this. Okay, now even if we are on the reading mode, we can see the tags and not only that, we can click those tags. And if you want to see all your tags, just click here and go to tags. There are many options here. We're not going to talk about them today. Just click here. And now I can see that I have three tags, uh, Porto tags. Here's the new woke, <laughs> not New York, <laughs> and other tags. But of course, there's a problem. Let's close this and go back here. As you can see, there is a hashtag here, but I cannot add a hashtag here. It broke. It's a different behavior. If I want to create a tag in, in the text, I use a hashtag. 
if I'm creating the tag here on the front matter, I cannot use the hashtag. And to be honest, I think I'm doing something wrong because it doesn't make sense. Why would it be different? Anyway, if you know why and how to fix this, please let us know in the comments below. And finally, you can create a parent tags. For example, let's call this places slash Porto. And where's the New York one? I think it's here. Let's fix this New York and let's add places here too. So now if we open this, we have places and we have New York and Porto. But here again, there is a little detail. Places slash Porto is one thing, Porto is another thing. Can you see here that there are two tags with the name Porto and one tag with place slash Porto? Weird. I'm pretty sure there is a plugin that can make this look beautiful. There are so many great plugins for Obsidian and I will be talking about them in the future. But I wanted you to see what's going to happen if you decide to move your nodes from Evernote to Obsidian. And I'm not trying to scare you. This is just how things will go. I've been through all this. I'm a little bit ahead of the videos, but I needed to show you. Anyway, enough productivity talk for one day. If you want to have some fun, go watch this video about the restoration of that 70s computer. After all, life is much bigger than a to-do list. Thanks for watching. See you soon.